Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to learn to draw some comics. I want to tell you that when I was in the second and the third grade, I wanted to be able to draw so bad I could taste it. But I compared myself with other of my classmates that were pretty good at it, and I figured I couldn't draw. And so I spent most of my life wishing I could. And I didn't learn until I got into my 60s that, yeah, with a few tricks, I can draw too. Now, had I known that when I was in the second grade or the third grade, I might have been illustrating my own children's books by now, but that didn't happen. I want you to have that opportunity if that's where you want to go. And so I'd like to convince all of you this morning that everybody can learn how to draw. If you start out at a young age where you are now, you're going to only get better through the rest of your life. So let's do this thing. This was fun for me to learn that even I could draw. So everybody should have some scratch paper from home. And I've asked you to have a number of different possibilities for drawing with. I've asked you to have a Sharpie. So everybody should just try making some lines with all the different things you've got. So that's a permanent marker. Then we've got an impermanent marker. So those two behave pretty much the same. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to figure out which I like the best to work with. Here I have a colored pencil. Yeah, that feels very different. I bet it feels different with you as well because I, could, I can get more variety in how I draw things rather than just the, you know, the uh, binary system, you know, colored, not colored that I get with the markers. This is a normal pencil. And that is not as quite as thick. So I don't know if that's going to be my favorite. It might end up to be yours. So far, I'm liking this one. Oh, this is nice. This is a crayon. That, that goes on nice and smooth. It gives me a little bit of a thicker line. And I, I, I like that. You know what? I think I'm going to work with a crayon this morning. You can choose whatever it is that you'd like to work with. And I would like you to just, I would like you to just do this little experiment with me on your scratch paper. I know that I've given you some pieces of paper for the final drawings. Uh, we're going to wait with those until we've done a little bit more practice on the scratch paper so we get the feel of it. So I would like to draw a cartoon of a person's face, but I'm not going to be overwhelmed with the whole idea of I need to make it look like a person right in the beginning. I'm going to take it in little bite-sized pieces, and that's the trick, bite-sized pieces. So I am going to, that kind of looks like a capital C, but that's going to be the nose of my figure, and that's the first thing I do. So why don't everybody take your preferred method of drawing and make yourself a nose. Now, next to that nose, I'm going to put a 66. And that comes out as looking like eyes, just above the nose. After that, I'm going to just make a little bit of a whoop, whoops. Underneath of the nose, that's going to be the mouth. So everybody's doing this with me, right? Then we're going to put in an ear. And about halfway out the nose, I'm going to start my line and I'm going to go whoop, just like that. After that, I'm going to take about halfway out the ear and make a line going down. And then this is my hair. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and now I'm going to make him a neckline. So I'm going to start on this side of his neck, go around like that, and make a little zoops, almost uh, an egg shape, but uh, leave the spot where the neck is coming through to show. And then here at the edge of the neck, I'm going to go one line this way. And here at the edge of the neck, I'm going to go one line this way. And there is my drawing, my first comic. 
And with all those little pieces put together, I can put something together that looks like a human face. And that is very cool. Because now that we've practiced the elements, we can change out the elements and we can get different expressions on the face, for instance. Let's start again with our nose. And let's do our 66 eyes. What about if I do that for a mouth? Add the ear, halfway out the nose and down, halfway out the ear and down. There's my hair again, my neckline, my shoulders, and this guy looks very different than that guy, just the expression of his face. And the only thing that I have changed is that little swoops of a mouth into a, a, a face going, oh. Let's see what other expressions we can get with changing our formula just a little bit. Here's my nose, my 66 eyes. This time for the mouth, I'm just going to go one little line. Ear halfway out the nose, whoops, down. Halfway out the ear and down. So here he's, he's, he's a little, uh, just, uh, he's a little bit skeptical about what's going on with, the, with a line like that for a mouth. But what about if I were to take, I mean, that, that's a fine comic. What about though, if I were to make his mouth into a triangle instead of a line, that's a new expression. In fact, I could give him some teeth showing and fill that in. Now he's calling to somebody. <laughs> this, is just, this is just so cool that just a tiny little difference in the drawing makes a different expression in the face. What about this one? There's our nose, 66 eyes. Here's a funny mouth. <laughs> I quite like this little guy, can you tell? There's my ear, there's my line, and there's his hair. <laughs> Let's do another one. Here's my nose, but this time I'm not going to do the 66 eyes. I'm going to have him with his eyes closed. And let's say, let's say he's singing a song. He's got a big open mouth. And so I'll show just a little bit of teeth and I will fill this in as, oh my goodness, he's singing a really loud note. Don't forget his ear. And I thought I couldn't draw. I've got my nose, but now instead of the 66 eyes, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I'm going to make the 66s upside down. So now he's looking up and not forward. And let's say for his mouth, I'm going to have his mouth open again. And this time I'm going to show not his teeth, but his tongue and block out the rest of this square that is supposed to represent his mouth. Get him his ear and his funny hair and now he's talking. This time I'm going to make him look happy. And when we're happy, a lot of times we have teeth showing. I'm going to have his eyes up again. And there's a mouth. I'll put a little dimple on the edge of the mouth to show that he's really pulling it back. <laughs> Give him his ear. And there is a smile with teeth showing.
What about this one? There's a nose. Now for the eyes, I'm going to do a capital L and another capital L right next to it. They have the L leaning a little bit towards his ear and just put little dots here to represent his eyes. So now these become his eyelids, right? And he's going to be looking a little skeptical about something. Halfway out the nose, down. Give him his ear. That goes down and our favorite hair. Give him his neckline if you like and his shoulders or not. I didn't do it on the others. Okay, let's have a different expression. We got his nose, but this time instead of 66 eyes or 99 eyes or capital L eyes, I'm going to have great big wide open eyes. And I think great big wide open eyes needs a surprised mouth as well. Give him his ear. And there, he's seen a ghost. Let's try something, let's try drawing a lady instead of a guy. So for a lady, a lot of times you'll find the noses are a little bit smaller. And I can go right back to the 66s. And a nice mouth. Maybe I'll give her a dimple at the edge of the mouth. Halfway out the nose. I will give her a chin and half of her neck. And a, an ear. Now, how to, I mean, this looks like what we've been drawing so far, but how to, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. The hair's not going to be quite as easy to do because that last guy, he had pretty easy hair, but I'm going to give this gal, and you know, long hair doesn't mean it's a girl. You can have guys with long hair. You can have girls with short hair, but I'm trying to switch it out here a little bit. Plus, when I give her a neckline, I'm also going to give her, in case anyone is confused about what my drawing is, I'm going to give her a little pearl necklace. And while I'm at it, I can give her an earring. And then you can pretty much tell that I've drawn a lady. Now let's try something really different. See if you can tell what this is going to be. I got a nose. And this time, the eyes are going to be a pair of glasses. Got to have an ear if you're going to have glasses, because a line will go straight back there in order to go behind the ear like glasses do. Now, I'm going to give this guy, instead of hair, I'm going to give him a bald head. And I will still need halfway out the nose to do this. And instead of showing his mouth, I'm going to give him a mustache that apparently has grown over his mouth. So there he looks like that. I'll give him, I can give him some eyes in the glasses. And then I can also give him a little bit of hair, say, so this is like an older gentleman who has a bald head. Now, for his neckline, I don't necessarily want to give him the one I've been giving the young boy that I've been drawing because that's maybe like a t-shirt. I want him to be maybe a little bit more uh, older. So I'll give him a V, and then I will make that V into a dress shirt, like that, and might even give him a tie. So you can see there's lots of different things that we can do to get these expressions on the faces. And a good thing to practice with, if you really enjoy this, is to go to the Sunday comics and just look until you find one that's really simple. I would suggest you start out really simple because the, uh, you can get really complicated with these line drawings of people and you shouldn't be overwhelmed like I was when I was in the second and third grade. So find a simple one and look at it, and instead of trying to draw the whole thing, which was my problem, I was overwhelmed by the whole thing, break it down into its component pieces. 
look at the nose. Just draw the nose, nothing else. And then once that's accomplished, see where the eyes are placed in relation to the nose and add one after the other until you've got the whole thing drawn. And if you're not pleased with the one that you've drawn, then draw another. I mean, practice, practice, practice. That's what this is all about. Let's try doing somebody in a different angle. So if I'm not looking at someone in profile whose nose is over here, let's say I've got someone whose nose is here in the middle. And so the eyes would be above, and I want to make this one happy, so I'm gonna have her eyes uh, quite wide open. Now here's a smile, and I'm gonna have her have just a little bit of her mouth open because she's smiling about something she just heard about, and she's talking about it as well. Give her some dimples maybe on either side. Oh goodness, let's give her some freckles. Let's really go for it. <laughs> now I'm going to draw an outline of her face. And now comes hair. Hair has always been a challenge for me. Maybe it won't be for you, but I want her to have, first I'm gonna give her hair at the top. And I did this by looking at a comic on a Sunday, uh, in the Sunday comics. So this is why I know that it works this way and I practiced it before showing it to you. But let's give her some hair that looks like that for the top of the hair, that's the border of the hair to the face. And then the rest of the hair is just kind of a little, a little wild. There, give her a nice neck. And because she's a lady, I'm going to give her some earrings. Do you recognize who this is? I'm kind of hoping you do. This is one of the characters in the comic called Stone Soup. And if you don't find Stone Soup in your newspaper, then go to the web and ask for it because it's really good. And this, this artist is just fantastic in what she does. Okay, we're gonna give her a V-neck and some shoulders and so, you know, you can add a little bit of, you know, structure to the hair, or you don't need to. The whole thing is just a few lines with a crayon on scratch paper can give you a human face that shows an expression. With practice, you can get to do this. So everybody has, uh, you've probably been doing smaller pictures than me on your scratch paper. You probably have a number of them on one piece of paper. The reason that I've given you these tiny pieces of paper, I mean, they're not tiny, they're just smaller scale. So when we have practiced a little bit on the scratch paper, if you want to have something that your mom can hang up on the refrigerator, this is what I was thinking. So this is the size of it, and you'll be thinking about, I want to relatively fill the size of the page, I don't want to have you know, my drawing up here in the corner here. I want, to, I want to try to kind of scale it to this size. So after the work that you've done on the scratch paper going to this one, we want to have the nose of our fellow. Let's do the fellow we did in the beginning. About that size, okay? So, and kind of in the middle, off a little bit to the left because he's going to be right here. And I want to leave space for his hair, <laughs> his wild hair. So there's my 66 eyes, my ear, there's his smile, I'm going to make him with a dimple, halfway out the nose, make the chin and down, halfway out the ear, down it goes, there's his neck, there's his shoulders, and now I have all this space up here that I can fill with his hair. Now I can stop just there, or I can even give him a little bit of hair down here going on. And that is then, relative to the size of the paper, a pretty good size of a face. And of course, don't forget, if you're gonna have this on the refrigerator, you're going to want to, you're going to want to sign it, have your date on it, so that your mom and dad can know many years from now who it was that made this and when.